Hey everyone, this is John Daly. I'm back with uh, Bernard Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. How's it going today, Bernie? Everything's just fine. Good. Go ahead. <laughs> I, everything's just fine. I just said, how about you? Everything good? Oh, yeah. I'm doing great. Doing great. Thank you. So um, today we figured we'd talk uh, about some uh, a couple of items that are currently in the news. Uh, the first one being the possible overturning of Roe versus Wade, which everyone's been talking about since the uh, the uh, leak from uh, Justice Alito's draft. Uh, you brought up a point last week that uh, neither side has been happy with Roe in, in one sense. Uh, pro-life people have wanted it to be overturned for obvious reasons for quite some time. And a lot of uh, pro-choice people uh, don't like the restrictions on abortion to come with it. Uh, with it. Now, if, uh, if Roe is overturned, we probably, my guess is that we probably won't see much of a change in a lot of states, but in some deep red states, we'll likely see, I would say, heavier restrictions on abortion, maybe even some outright bans. And in deep blue states, um, we'll probably see even fewer uh, restrictions that currently exist, maybe even no restrictions on abortions, at least virtually. So I'd expect a lot of, uh, of state level fights in the future. What, what's, what's your take on all this? Well, you're absolutely right, is, is my first take. But if, if we thought the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling was divisive. You ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, if they overthrow Roe v. Wade, you're going to see more divisiveness, more polarization in America. Uh, here's what throws me. The, the people who are, the liberals who are for abortion rights, they say, understandably, you can't have such a profound decision made by five justices who are elected by nobody and accountable to nobody. Understandable. But they didn't have any problem when seven justices who were accountable to nobody and elected to nobody ruled in their favor. So it's not so much a matter of principle, it's a matter of what side the the justices rule on if they ruled in in a way that you like that's fine if they ruled in a way that somebody else like that's not fine uh, and here's another thing that throws me if the liberals who are for abortion rights really are concerned about five ju justices making a decision okay then they should be happy if it's overturned because then it won't be five unelected justices it'll be officials in 50 states, state legislatures making the decision. And if you don't like the decision they make, vote them out of office. You know, so so the, there are things that just don't add up and they don't add up because if you're on one side, if you're on one side for abortion rights, nothing's going to change your mind. If you're against abortion, nothing's going to change your mind. Now, finally, John, there are political, obvious political implications. Uh, Democrats were in a state of malaise. They weren't going to come out and vote for Republicans in November, but they may very well have sat home figuring what's the point? There's going to be a red wave. I'm not going to wait in line and vote for Democrats who aren't going to win anyway. This has energized them. I don't think there's any question about that. Where there is a question is, will it make any difference? And we don't know. And guessing is 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 just a waste of time. They will be energized. This is an issue that they didn't have a few days ago that they will have now, and they'll carry it through to November. But whether it's going to trump uh, inflation, crime, uh, the mess on our southern border, we don't. That, that remains to be seen. So stay tuned on that. Right. I think I think one thing that the uh, the Democrats and the pro-choice crowd have on their side is that I'm, I'm sort of taken back. I guess I'm not surprised by this, but I, I see I saw a recent poll the other day where two thirds of Americans roughly um, don't I don't think they really get what Roe versus Wade covered. I mean, they they, they seem to think that if it's overturned, um, abortion is is goes becomes illegal or I'm sorry. Um, yeah, abortion becomes illegal. And that's that's there's a lot like we've been discussing. There's a lot more nuance. It gets pushed down, and I don't think a lot of people 
understand that. And I think that in a, in a way uh, works to the Democrats' favor. No, and what will happen is precisely what you said leading up to this, uh, to my comments. And that is some states, see, people who are against abortion are cheering right now, understandably, but they're not gonna be cheering if certain blue states say Roe v. Wade didn't go far enough, right. didn't go far enough. We want no restrictions on abortions from the time of conception until, until the baby is born. That could happen. And, and in states like New York and California, that may very well happen. And now there'll, there'll be a, a proviso that says the woman's health, you know, is, is an issue. If a woman decides she, she wants to change her mind at eight and a half months, there will be certain laws in certain states that allow her to do that. And, and conservatives who are against abortion won't be cheering when that happens. No, nor, no. Nor will they be cheering if if this issue has political, serious political ramifications? Right, right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and switch to another topic, one that you've been uh, writing about lately: the uh, disinformation governance uh, board. Um, I can't uh, wait. I can't wait for this. <laughs> so that's it's forming within the uh, the Department of Homeland Security. Um, now, the idea behind it, or at least the stated idea behind it, is to uh, you know, combat uh, disinformation from foreign rivals like uh, Russia and China. Um, but you you have some concerns about the, the precedent you could set. Can you, can you talk about that a bit? Well, first, let me say, this is a really stupid idea with an even stupider name, okay? The government is doing such a bang up job at controlling inflation, controlling crime, controlling the southern border crisis that that now they're going to get into the business of deciding what's true and what's false information this is a horrible idea and it's a horrible idea if they were just to leave it to the, the lies the russians tell about us or the lies the chinese tell about us you know what i could live with that okay but how long is it going to be what's the over under and i'm taking the under by the way before they decide that something Donald Trump says at a rally that's provably false is disinformation and it's a threat to democracy. And since they're doing this in the name of national security, it's a threat to national security. This is a bad idea. And then they go and make it even worse, if that's possible, by picking a left-wing kook, a left-wing whack job to head the agency. I'm just wondering, in a country of 330 million people, this is the best they could come up with, this woman? Nina Jankowicz, this is the best? What, what, what happened? Did, did Pee Wee Herman turn down the job? I mean, this is, this is crazy. It's a bad idea, and they ought to ditch it before they, they fund it. And if they do fund it, if the, if the Republicans take over, they're not going to have any money to run there disinformation governance board. It's a bad idea. It should end before it begins. Would you agree though that that she's the, the leader they're 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 gonna they would put in charge. She is a pretty good singer. <laughs> Have you seen that video of her online with Mary Poppins today? Well of course I've seen it. Who hasn't seen it? I mean but you gotta give that to her. She's pretty she's trying to good. make a serious point out of this. <laughs> How do they come up with somebody like this? If they thought, and, and it's not a good idea, but if they thought the disinformation governance sport, I mean, did these people read 1984? Did they read George Orwell? Did they under, Did they read it and somehow think that Orwell was saying that a truth, a ministry of truth was a good idea? Is that what they thought? Did they miss the point of the entire book? But if, if they're going to go down that road, then you don't pick a, a progressive woman who has made her views, her anti-conservative views known. As I say, and I'm, this is serious, in a country of 330 million people, is that the best woman they could come up with? Is that the best person they could come up with? 
this is the gang that couldn't shoot straight. And every time you think they can't do something even dumber than they did yesterday, they go and prove you wrong. No, I think that's an ongoing theme uh, with, the, with the Biden administration. They're they're not they're not uh, they would I think they would serve themselves well if they started sort of workshopping some of these ideas outside of the far left. You know, get some people, get some moderates on board, get some conservatives. Just talk to people and say, you know, we're thinking about maybe doing it. What What are your thoughts? Just you know, it, I, it's I don't understand. It. I just don't understand it, I'm, I, and I'm I'm not being. You know, I'm not trying to be uh, extreme in this and to, to make a point to be a funny point or whatever. I don't get it. I don't get how bad they do things. I just don't get it. And and until Roe v. Wade became an issue, and I don't make predictions about politics. You know, I, I, I say what I think may happen, but I'm humble enough to say, I don't know. Between today and, and November, when the midterms are held, a whole lot could happen. And I, as I've said, and something probably will. Well, something just did. Roe v. Wade just did. And that could affect things. But absent that, if you take, I know that's like saying, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you like the show? But if you take Roe v. Wade out of the equation, it looks like the Democrats are going to get crushed. And they're going to get crushed because of this goofy idea that they have and because they can't control crime and because they can't control the border. You know, usually it's, quote unquote, it's the economy stupid. And yeah, inflation is the biggest single issue. But this time around, it's more than the economy stupid. This time around, it's also the culture. People notice crime. They notice the mess on the southern border. They notice that there's a contingent of liberals who think it's okay to teach kindergarten kids, kindergarten kids about sexual orientation, which which somehow is seen as anti-gay. It's not anti-gay, you know, it's it's anti young, young children being taught about sexual orientation that's that that can wait. So right, this, right. Time, this time it's not just the economy, stupid, it's also the culture. And and yeah, Democrats I mean, will pay a price for that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. And and the you know Democrats, you know, being in power and seemingly complacent with a lot of these issues that you just brought up, um, you know, and it's taking an obvious and deserved toll on uh, on um, Biden's approval rating, of course. And uh, that kind of segues into the, the the next issue I wanted to, I guess, the last issue actually we were going to talk about today, and that's. Um, Kind of bringing this back to Biden himself, he's got you know a couple of years left in his presidency. I think it's obviously uh, things are not going well. Uh, people notice it. What do you think, if anything, that he can do within the next two years to sort of to sort of save his presidency? I, I think we're sort of on the same boat where he, uh, you know, I don't think it's, and I think you think the same thing. It's not likely he'll run again, but I do think you know, a president's legacy is sort of important to them. What do you think he can do in these next two years to sort of maybe end things on a much better note than he has now? <laughs> yeah, the reason you're laughing is because there's nothing you, you probably can think of and there's nothing I can think of. I can think of, uh, let, me be, let me be fair, I can think of one thing. And it would take the cooperation of Donald Trump to do this. <laughs> he has to make this about Donald Trump. They're already making the midterms about Donald Trump with this, what are they calling this, this ultra MAGA uh, agenda. Right. They need, they, they hate Donald Trump and they desperately need him. They just can't quit him. They need him because they know that Donald Trump is not a popular figure outside of his own base. So they're going to run against him in the midterms. Before this is over, you're going to hear a lot more about Donald Trump. And if Biden decides to run in 2024, and let me say this, I will make a prediction on this. He's not going to run. And if he runs, he may not even get his party's nomination. Uh, but if, he, if I'm wrong, and I've been wrong before, and he decides to run, he's going to have to somehow run. He can't run on his record. He can't run on what a great job he did controlling inflation or the border or crime or, or any of that. So he's going to have to run on the alternative or a bunch of right-wing crazies 
led by Donald Trump. And I don't think that's going to be successful. I just don't think that's going to work. But if it, the only way it works is if Donald Trump helps him out. If Donald Trump comes out of, you know, Mar-a-Lago and and constantly hits the the theme about how 2020 was a stolen election, how how Joe Biden was never the legitimate president, how Donald Trump was, should have won, but it was rigged. And by the way. I understand, as you do, John, there are some people watching us now, some people who are intelligent, decent human beings who are saying, well, the election was stolen. It was rigged. Well, if it was, it, no evidence was ever presented by Donald Trump's legal team, not by me, not by Joe Biden, not by Kamala Harris. Donald Trump's legal team couldn't provide any evidence that the election is rigged. Well, there's shenanigans probably, but there always are, but not enough to throw the election. My, but getting back to the central point, the, Donald Trump is his only lifeline. Think about that. They need, they hate Donald Trump and they desperately need him. And if he doesn't go for the, if he doesn't bite, if he doesn't go for the bait, then, I, then I, the Democrats are gonna have a tough time in 2024 because between 2020 and 2024 is not going to be looking good, I don't think. No, and I think I think there's a taste of, you know, the in the Virginia governor's race, um, they tried to make Donald uh, Trump, you know, a very big part of that, and it just it just didn't resonate, you know. Um, I'm forgetting the governor, the guy who won his yeah. name now at the moment, it's but Glenn uh, Youngkin. Yes, Glenn Youngkin. I mean, he, you know, he. Uh, it's sort of impressive to see what he did there because he didn't. Um, you know, he didn't go never Trump or anything. He didn't, you know, take shots, but he kind of kept his distance from from Donald Trump. And to uh, I think everybody's uh, what was fortunate for the Republicans is is Trump kind of laid back a little bit on that. He didn't sort of insert himself in that race like he's been doing with others. And I think it served <laughs> the Republican Party well in that instance. That's right. That's the needle that that Republicans have to thread. You don't bash Donald Trump, and you don't embrace Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has to cooperate by saying, I get it. Not everybody likes me. I get it. Uh, if you bash Donald Trump, you're going you're gonna to turn off the 20% of Republican voters that will never abandon him. So you don't want to do that. If you embrace him, you're likely to turn off the moderate swing voters in key battleground states, and you don't want to do that. So we know how to win. We meaning Donald, the Republican Party. I don't mean we, you and me. Right. <laughs> the Republican Party knows how to win, but they they need to 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 thread that needle. They need to not bash Donald Trump, not offend his most loyal base, and not go out of their way to embrace him either, because that's that's also dangerous. Right, right. And I, I do think, you know, kind of going back to where we started this particular question, I mean, I do think there are things that Biden certainly can do to make things better for himself and for the Democratic Party in his last two years. I just don't think he he has the, the guts to do it. I mean, one of the, an idea that uh, Jonah Goldberg, he, he brings up is he's, you know, he's, he always brings up the point that Biden, what Biden really needs is a assist a soldier soldier moment. Um, every week, you know, something where he can speak out against the hardest left and, and get, you know, get to catch the ear of some some moderates that he you know he's kind of lost. That would that would be a brilliant strategy if he said if he said you know what I, I, off the top of my head if he said you know what I'm for gay rights and I think gay people and transgender people and all people have rights. They should be allowed to vote. They shouldn't be afraid of losing their jobs. But I don't think five-year-old kids in kindergarten should be learning about sexual orientation. That would help him immensely if he said, we're a nation of immigrants. As a matter of fact, we need immigrants. We need people to come in and do certain kinds of jobs. And, and it makes America a better place. But I don't like what's happening on our southern border, and I'm going to do everything I can to stop. There are things he can do, getting back to your other question. There are things he can do. The problem is he's got the left of his own party that will turn on him if he does those things. If he says, you know, the problem with crime is criminals. Guns are a problem, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is fatherlessness, for instance. 
the real problem is district attorneys who are soft on crime. The district attorneys are Demo fellow Democrats. If he says that, he's going to lose the progressive wing of his party. If he says, we don't want open borders uh, between the United States and Mexico, he's going to lose the progressive wing of his party. He has to, the problem for Joe Biden is that Republicans are in his only, his only political opponents. Democrats are also his political opponents, progressive Democrats. And that's not a good place to be if you're Joe Biden. Now, there's an, an interesting parallel there because, you know, he, for us, you know, we bring up these ideas like we just did, and this just seems like a no brainer. I mean, it's just very easily. But for him, you know, it's, it's, it's in some ways seen as, as political suicide within his party. And I think that's, that kind of goes back to the same problem that the Republicans have, you know, if they, if they state that, um, you know, Trump lawfully lost, you know, fairly lost the election. Um, they're they're going to pay a price. You know, you know, not everybody. Some of some of these more blue states where Republicans are running, it's not such a big deal. But um, you know, the he how hesitant some people are. You know, we saw in the Ohio race where you know the guy who won J.D. Vance and his his I think all but one of his his uh, primary opponents were basically you know making the point, yeah, the election was stolen. So we're <laughs> we're gonna make we're gonna fix this type of stuff once we get elected. But it's just, yeah, they, they can't just say, OK, you know, it's I want to try. You know, they can't say that I wanted President Trump to win. I wanted the Republican to win. It didn't work out. We need to do better. That it's, it seems like such an easy thing to say, but it, it just isn't. Today's moderate, moderate Democrats have a real problem speaking out on certain common sense things such as crime. So, you know, DAs who are soft on crime, the border things like that because of the fear of what's going to the blowback from the uh, left of their party. And mainstream Republicans can't say, well, they can, but they run a risk if they say the election is over in 2020. It's over. You lost, Donald. You, you, you put up a good fight, but you lost. Because if they do that, then they run the risk of offending that, that base within the base, you know, not the broad spectrum of Republican voters, but that narrow base of hardcore uh, Trump supporters who will never abandon him. So both sides are prisoners to their extremes. Both, both, the, both the, mid, the, the moderate Democrats and the moderate Republicans are at the mercy of their extremes. And you know what? I'll tell you who I'll vote for. I'm a registered Republican, let me say that. But I'll vote for somebody who stands up to the extremes. Uh, I, I admire Joe Manchin. I won't vote for Joe Manchin, even if he were to run for president, because I don't believe you're voting for the individual, you're voting for an entire team. But Joe Manchin has the guts to stand up to his side. And well, Chris Christie, for instance, has the guts to stand up to his side. But when you do, you got a problem. You got a problem. Yeah. If, if, if your goal is to win the nomination of, of the party, you have a problem. That's true. No, fun times ahead for sure. <laughs> well, this probably sounds like a good place to, uh, to wrap things up. Is there anything else you wanted to say uh, to viewers today? I hope you like this, these chats that we do there. They're not rehearsed. They're not planned. Sometimes I say things that I wish I could take back. <laughs> but uh, let me know what you think and, and do me a favor. Tell your friends about this because the more the merrier, you know, the more people who are tuned into these conversations and the columns that I write, uh, the, the better the better we are for the website, I think. Oh, definitely, definitely. And we've been getting some great feedback on these segments. Uh, we're going to be, you know, do, continue doing them. And uh, but we always want to hear what people have to say. If you have any suggestions for topics or um, certain things you think can uh, make these segments better, uh, feel free to, uh, we, we encourage you, in fact, to uh, leave your comments in the comments section. We, we read all of them and uh, we'll see what we can do to, uh, to make things uh, as, as, as good as you would like them to be. So uh, thanks again, Bernie. To, to the person who, before we leave, to the person who wrote in and said, lose the Emmys back there because it looks like you're showing up. I'm not showing off. This is, this is where I do, this is my studio. You know, I, I could do it from the kitchen,
but then you're going to complain about the refrigerator being in the shot. So <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm not showing off. This is this is the only place I've got to do these things. I will say they do make me feel inadequate. Um, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I have a little soccer trophy from when I was a little kid, and that's I think that's the last one I've I've earned uh, or received for anything. So it is it is very intimidating, but that's okay. You, know, you deserve those. Um, you know, I could have been better at soccer. You know, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Signing off. Over and out, everybody. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time.